Okay, welcome to another episode of Hashtag Leadership, What's On Your Mind. Today, I'm going to be speaking to Phil Quirk. Hi, Phil, how are you doing? Hello, mate, how are you doing? Good, so we've got 20 minutes. Um, Phil is from PQ Performance. He's going to introduce himself. I'm going to be talking about leadership, uh, leadership journey, and trying to add some value to your leadership journey. So I'll start the, um, the watch. So Phil, introduce yourself. Tell us about who you are, where you come from, and a little bit about your leadership journey. So, uh, like Stu said, my name is Phil Quirk. Uh, uh, I've got um, a business called PQ Performance and a new business as well that I'm just launching now called Maya Goji. Um, uh, my background is similar to Shu. Uh, I spent a lot of time in the military. I kind of, my military career was divided between six years in the Marines first, um, uh, which I did, and then I left the Marines went outside for a couple of years into the big wide world um, and then decided to rejoin the, the RAF uh, to do the same trade as, as obviously you did and then did six years um, in the RAF. Uh, but both very different careers, both very different services. Um, uh, I think the, the, the way I often describe it is like pe- people, people sometimes ask, you know, which is better? And I think for me, both were good for different reasons. Um, but it's like trying to compare the, you know, the police service to the fire brigade. It's, you know, they both wear uniforms, but it's, it's completely different. Um, in 2014, I think it was, I left the RAF uh, uh, and decided to set up a business, which was at that time called HPP Training, Human Behavioural Performance, um, alongside a, a colleague from the RAF, Phil Kelly, who obviously is a good friend of yours as well. Um, yeah, and then on the, the um, podcast as well. So that's going to be in a couple of weeks. Oh, oh, brilliant. Um, yeah, so me and Phil started HPP training with, with, in a bedroom, like a lot of startups. Uh, uh, there, was an, there was another guy involved, which was, he was more of a, involved from a kind of a, he had s- experience in the civilian sector running a business, whereas like, obviously me and Phil have both been in the military pretty much all our lives, both of us. Um, and we, we had great success with HPP training. It, 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 it grew really quickly. It, it attracted uh, an investor who bought out John, our first business partner. Um, we, we, we went from like being in a bedroom, uh, running the business from registered from fit. I think it was at Phil's at Phil's house. And then we kind of moved to uh, a central London office full, you know, Charles II street, you know, right down from Piccadilly. It was just an incredible transformation. Um, at that point we rebranded. So we had our first iteration of rebranded HPP and it became PQ, uh, sorry, not um, PQ, it became Pronoctus. Uh, and uh, after a couple of years, uh, I, we, me and Phil were kind of just going in different directions slightly. Interestingly, I suppose from this in the topic of what we're talking about today, from a kind of leadership perspective, we, we, we both had very slight different visions of which way we thought the business could go. Um, uh, and that led eventually to us deciding that he would keep Pronoctis and then go in the direction he's going, um, which is which is going from strength to strength. Uh, and then I would start my own sort of business, which was based, which was based more around what, what I was really passionate about. Um, and then that's then led from PQ Performance to Maya Goji, which is kind of where I'm at today uh, from a business perspective. Fantastic. So tell us a little bit about what, what do you actually deliver? What, what is your business now, what today? Well, I think, I mean, PQ Performance is primarily uh, uh, an NLP and hypnosis training provider. Um, and we run most of our training out in Barcelona for Mobila. So we, we use a a really nice filler we have a, it's fully inclusive and the the idea is we create this kind of cocoon learning where people come in they're completely severed from their usual day-to-day routine um so instead of it being kind of in a hotel conference room where you, you come along for the, the the course at the start of the day and then at the end of the day you know you commute back to where you where you where you live or stay in a hotel and um, we we decided that we wanted to make the whole experience uh a controlled environment where we could create a perfect learning environment. So PQ Performance really does that, and, and, and as well as that performance coaching. We have a few corporate clients. We're not, we're, the business isn't aimed in the corporate sector, which is, I think, the, the, the slight difference that me and Phil had, whereas Pro Noctis is very much a corporate training and consultancy business um, with, a, with, a, uh, with an institute and leadership management arm on it where you can do coaching and mentoring courses. 
I, I was very much aimed in uh, doing uh, individual courses through PQ Performance. But we, d- we do have a couple of corporate clients, which has been great. Uh, it, it, the, the corporate work substantiates the other parts of the business. Um, and then we do, we do coaching. Uh, but my new business will be very, very slightly differently um, aimed for, for a different market, my Goji. Awesome. I'm really excited. I've seen the development of that and it's in the early stages, isn't it? And it's really fun yeah. to see that evolve. Um, and on a personal note as well, I've really used you as a, I, I've seen you develop in the story that you've told already. And it's really inspirational to see you and Phil doing what you're doing and really helped me on my journey as well. Yeah. So going back to leadership, yeah. what have you learned about your leadership in your time? So the military, transition into business and um, my big passion is about we've got to lead ourselves first and be aware of ourselves um, before we affect others and inspire others and drive the business forward so what have you learned or what are you aware of in your leadership journey so far What a realization that I had, I think, probably at Pronoctis, was that, that I, I don't think that I'm naturally a leader myself. Um, I think I think if you look at like Phil, for instance, Phil is a, a leader of Phil Kelly. That is obviously is a, is a leader of men. You know, he he can he can communicate his intent. He can inspire people. He can galvanize people. Uh, he, and what what I found when I started PQ Performance was that. I'm, I'm much more an entrepreneur than a leader. So I think I love working inside my own head. Um, and I think that the difference between entrepreneurship and leadership is that you've got to get what's inside your head, outside your head as a leader. Um, I, 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 I never realized that I didn't do that well until I started my own business. And I had other people that were really buying into the concept of what I was doing. We'd have, you know, we'd have these team meetings where I'd have to kind of emphasize the point that, that if, if I'm not communicating enough, you know, just tell me you need more interaction with me because what was happening was I was kind of adopting this model of, I trust you to do what you're doing. I, I brought you into the business because you, you're incredible at what you do. If you've got a decision to make, you, you take the ownership of that decision and I'll, and I'll always back it. And I thought that was like really cool leadership. It sounded like really, but, but actually it doesn't work for everyone. Um, so some of the people that had come in, to help me start PQ Performance came from a corporate background. So, so they, they, they actually weren't very comfortable with having complete ownership of things. They, they, want, they wanted management and direction. Uh, they wanted to not be told what they can and can't do, but they wanted a guidance and leadership for me, which, excuse me, if I think about it now, uh, I probably wasn't providing that much. I think, I think some people find entrepreneurship hard because of the, the, the loneliness of it. And I think some people find leadership hard because of the, for opposite reasons. Um, and I think if you look at like people that are really successful, uh, the, 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 the world's greatest businessmen are the ones that have been able to transition from entrepreneur to, to leader of lots of people. I think, I think it's, it's, it's so much easy to be an entrepreneur in some ways because you only have to, you have to manage yourself. You have to, like you just said, you, you need to make sure that you're doing everything you need to do. You need to make sure that, that you're, you're, you're holding yourself accountable for things. But when it's your own business, I find that quite an easy thing to do because you know that no one else is there to pick it up. Um, getting other people on board with that, I, I, it's been an interesting journey for me. I think I've, I've, I've become much better at it, though. I found that over the last six months, it's become something I'm much more comfortable with than perhaps I was when I started PQ middle of last year. Um, but but it is it's an interesting um, it's an interesting spectrum to be on. I think. Yeah, that's interesting to hear you say that. I, I didn't know that about the the workings behind that. Um, and it's an interesting concept as well, isn't it? Because that's. Every, I say about the, the leadership journey is, is unique to that person. So that's great. And again, that builds um, that self-awareness and that reflection of, of where you're going and what you need to do in the future. Yeah. Uh, so what's happening in your world and, and your work regard to what you see common threads in other people's leadership and, and people who are doing it really well or the common mistakes you see? Yeah, I mean... 
I, I see great leadership with some of my corporate clients. Um, uh, so so I, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be able to uh, coach at a fairly high level with, with some of my corporate clients, um, and some of which are, are, are kind of a really, really strategic and senior place. I, one of my clients I'm, I've coached um, uh, is, is currently set, setting up a bank for his company. So they're launching their own bank. Uh, and a lot of the, like the coaching that we've done is, is is kind of like there's no there's no manual for setting up a bank. This is what he says: you you can't pick up a you know a, 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 a setting up a bank for dummies book and then start going through it. He goes, it is an incredible, incredibly complex and interconnected process which has no manual to go with it. Um, and I've seen his leadership, uh, which is just incredible. He 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 he, he is really. Uh, an inspiring person. I think that's the wonderful thing about being a coach is I know that I'm not necessarily a, a great leader, as I would say he is, but I don't need to be a great leader to understand how to coach someone. Um, it's almost like uh, you're, you're a fountain of advice, but a desert of application <laughs> in some respects. Um, but the thing, the thing that I'm seeing the most with the work that I'm doing at the minute, which is partly where my agoji came from, is I think what 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 everyone's aware of is stress. So stress stress is playing a huge role, and 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 things like coronavirus and what's happening right now, that's exasperating that situation exponentially. So stress is a huge thing, and it's affecting how businesses are able to cope because it's because it's, it's overtook everything else in terms of what it affects the business from a um, either uh, people being off work because they can't be there. So absenteeism or worse still presenteeism when people are there, but they're unable to function at any sort of level of ability that they, they should be operating at. Um, and the, the other thing is resilience, which is kind of like the, the other side of the coin. What, what I've seen with a lot of my clients is they, they, specifically with the younger people that are coming through, they want them to be more resilient, um, the search for this mythical resilience. And, and, and I think what's, if you look at the military now, if you look at the RAF, for instance, um, it's a similar thing in terms of our old branch, the, 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 the word adventure sort of being replaced and resilience is what they're after now. The, I know that some of the, one of their centers is, a, is at the Robson Resilience Center. So yeah. they're, they're really searching for this idea of resilience. Um, and the interesting thing about that is that, in my experience, pe people want to be the noun, but don't want to do the verb. So people want to be the thing, but not have to do the thing that goes with it. So resilience is the noun, but what's the verb that comes with resilience? What's the doing that leads you to the noun? And the truth of that is it's adversity. It's, it's, it's hardship and it's going through challenging times or challenging situations, which steals you and strengthens you and creates resilience. So... We, we, we've got the end game, which is resilience. But to understand resilience, you have to really go through adversity. Ad, ad, resilience is the destination. Adversity is the journey that leads there. Um, so I think from a, from, a, from a leadership perspective, stress is the problem to solve of the future. And resilience seems to be the thing that lots of my clients anyway are, are, are talking about how they can create more resilience with their workforce. Yeah, fantastic. And 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 again, I, I could I could listen to you a, a lot. That your storytelling and your words are, 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 are fantastic. And um, and I definitely one of my aspirations is to come on one of your courses at some point as well. So that's on my to do list. Um, so talk about um, one of the things that I'm encouraging people to do. And again, with this podcast, is to just stop, think, change perspectives. Um, look at where you're at, encourage lifelong learning. Um, so what do you um, say to encourage people to get involved in your courses or to encourage people to be coached, to be encouraged to step outside their comfort zone? Um, why should they do it? And all that kind of just doing something different. Yeah, well, I think the, 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 first, the first mistake people make with educational um, development is they, they think it's a destination, not a journey. So it's, it's ever evolving, isn't it? You know, there was, there was an endless amount of 
ideas, theories, books, concepts that you can that you can explore and absorb. Some some of them some of them obviously you know they resonate and, and they work for people. Others you know you know you kind of let let it go. Um, so if, if if I reflect back to the to the question that you asked last time about the good leadership that I'm seeing, the good leaders that I see not only do they see their own personal development journey as something really important, but also, you know, they, they absolutely impart that onto those around them. Um, and I think that I'm never going to be finished learning, you know, no matter how many courses I go, no matter how many books I read, no matter how many things people show me and teach me, there's always going to be more there to do. Um, and it, the, the, the quicker you kind of get this, you know, this, it's like the Simon Sinek thing, isn't it? The, the, looking at learning like it's a finite thing or an infinite thing, the sooner you develop this infinite mindset to, to learning that, that I'm never going to be able to absorb all the information that's available in this amazing world, but I'm going to give it a, a bloody good go. Um, one of my favorite phrases is uh, live, live, live like you'll die tomorrow, learn like you'll live forever. Um, and, you know, and, and I think that, that, that is, the future for, for, for businesses, you know, the knowledge, knowledge management is going to be key for businesses in the future. So the, the most, and, and we, we've known this, you know, for, 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 for decades, the most valuable employees are your smartest, most resilient, going back to that word, um, uh, uh, flexible, um, all of these kind of skills. Now the, the way you, develop them is you 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 allow people to go do courses go on things that maybe isn't anything to do with work as well maybe it's not directly linked to the specific job that they do but it makes them a better person it enriches them as a person and the byproduct of that is that they come into work and they're, they're, they're better what they do um so i think this kind of lifelong learning for me is 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 f through some of the most inspirational leaders that i've worked with is something that they absolutely exhibit daily. Yeah, I, I'd say that it's a privilege sometimes to work with somebody. And and again, it's that coach relationship and that process that I, I learn so much from the people around me. And I love it when I learn something from, so I'll put something into a perspective, into a story. And then when a client changes it and says, oh, in my head, this is what it sounds like. And I'm like, I love that, I'll, I'll use that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, storytelling is powerful, uh, and obviously, as you know, it's something that I I'm a huge advocate of. Sto storytelling is is so amazing because it depends on the person's own mind, how they interpret the characters of the story, the meaning of the story. Um, you know, it, it, it's completely individual to every person. Uh, I, I I'm, my last ever expedition in the RAF was it was in sweden on the on the wilderness canoe trip uh, which i know that you've done as well and i had i had this young lad on on the on the trip who who was he was not great um he, he was he was kind of like the person that would always he would always appear when food or drink had just been prepared but he would never be there when it was being prepared uh, and then he would always kind of like disappear as soon as it was worked on he would just sort of drift back into the shadows and and have this like elusive existence within a group. And, and after a few days, you, as you know, you, you've got nowhere to hide with that kind of attitude and mentality. And then other people were starting to get a little bit annoyed with him. And they were kind of saying to me, cause I was leading the expedition, like quirky, come on, you know, can you, can you have a word with this lad? He's, he's, you, you know, I won't repeat what they said, but, and, and I was thinking to myself, well, this is my last ever expedition. I'd handpicked a few of the guys to go and I made sure that they got loaded on it. Um, I didn't really want to be, you know, bollocking someone on the, on my last expedition. And then you've got that kind of awkwardness after you've had that difficult conversation. And I thought to myself, what I'll do is I'll tell us, I'll, I'll tell a story around the campfire. So I told us, you know, the famous story about the, the, the two wolves, each of us has two wolves that, that live inside us. It's the old, uh, it's, the, it's the old native American story. One wolf is lazy and is ignorant and, you know, won't, won't help. <laughs> I started listing off all the things that this lad was doing. And the other wolf is good. It, you know, it will always embrace hard work. It'll always do the right thing, even, even if it knows, you know, it leads to more sort of applicate, more sort of effort or whatever. So I kind of built these two walls up. And then, and then 
and then finish the story off with, you know, the boy asks the, 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 the chief, well, which wolf wins? And the chief says, well, it's the wolf that you feed the most. Um, and I kind of walked away from the campfire and thought, ah, that, that went really well. You know, I obviously, I didn't tell him off, which is the wonderful thing about storytelling. It wasn't directed at him, although hopefully he would have picked up on some of the things I was saying. Um, but it turned out he, he didn't. He, he just thought it was a great story and didn't really connect it to him. Um, but about a month later, I got an email from a squadron leader who was on the trip. And the squadron leader uh, was an intelligence officer who worked, uh, he was, a, he was a, an analyst and, a, a, and an interpreter. And he'd been working like crazy hours, like 16, you know, 16 hours a day. And <laughs> he listened to this story that I told around the campfire and sent me this email and said, oh, I, I, I just thought I'd send you an email. Thank you for the trip. It's fantastic. And also that story you told about the two wolves, I've been feeding the wrong wolf. So I've, I've PVR'd from the RAF. So I've, I've handed my notice in. Um, that, that, that's the wonderful thing about stories. I obviously don't, I'm, don't, I'm not communicating that to him. He copy and pastes the story into his own mind and applies it to himself. I'm trying to aim it at the young lad and someone on this side of the campfire is having a completely different experience of listening to the same story. So it's a fascinating thing, storytelling. Ah, wow. Talk about timing. Talk about timing. <laughs> I, was yeah. picking up on your, I was picking up on your eyes. Get like, look at I know, I just, I was like, yeah, 30 seconds. It doesn't matter. I was going to let you carry on if you didn't bring it to anyway. But um, that, Berkey, thank you so much. I've heard that story a couple of times and it, and it's so relevant every time I hear it. Um, so, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I could probably have you on again at some point, Phil. Um, great. Uh, thank you for your time. Um, if you enjoyed that, guys, I'm going to put Phil's details in below. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow our podcast, whichever podcast provider you're using. And thank you very much again, Phil. And um, see you all soon. See you next week. Thanks a lot, Stu. Cheers.